Hi, and welcome to my video about phosphorescence. If you haven't seen my video about fluorescence, I suggest that you watch it first. Links are on the screen and in the description. Here we have a row of paint bottles. And um, watching paint not drying is quite boring. But if we shine UV light on them, they suddenly look nice. They are all fluorescent, converting the UV light into visible light. But a few of these paints have another trick, even after the UV light is turned off. They still glow. They are phosphorescent. But why do they glow? The cheapest way is to add copper activated zinc sulfide into the material. This doesn't glow for very long, but since it is cheap and easily available, it is the typical choice for glow-in-the-dark toys like these. Adding a second activator, cobalt, can actually double the glow time, but also adds to the cost. All of these animals are probably just copper activated. They were dirt cheap. Another example is fishing lures that can attract fish at depth. Yummy! A newer and much better material is strontium aluminate, where the europium and dysprosium activated version glows around 10 times longer and brighter than zinc sulfide. When I turn off the UV light, I think you can tell that these powders have a strong glow. The only problem is that strontium aluminate is around 10 times more expensive than zinc sulfide. I don't know what type these watches use. It looks like the Seiko to the right has a more bluish color, so it could be strontium aluminate. But to be honest, they all lose their brightness rather fast. Back in the good old days, they didn't have this problem. They put radium sulfate in the zinc sulfide based paint on the hands and dials. The radioactivity would keep the zinc sulfide glowing day and night without any light charging it. However, the radioactivity is quite dangerous and also degrades the paints so they don't glow endlessly anymore. They do still have a short afterglow though when charged with a black light. You can still buy new watches today that glow constantly due to radioactivity. They are just based on the safer tritium instead of the radon emitting radium. Radioactivity is an extreme way of charging the phosphorus to a glow. Sunlight is good for charging glow in the dark items since the light contains a range of ultraviolet light. The standard black light I use also works really well and indoors at night it is a little more handy than sunlight. A Blu-ray laser, although it emits no UV light, can also be used since it is a very intense ray of near ultraviolet light. This has the advantages of being focusable, so you can enjoy a nice effect like shown with these marbles. Let's get a little more technical. Where does this glow come from? It is actually quite similar to fluorescence, where an electron absorbs UV light, emits some of the energy as heat, before releasing the rest of the absorbed energy as light with another wavelength. This all happens so fast that, to our eyes, fluorescence is instantly with no afterglow. An electron, however, has a property called spin. In fluorescence, the electron has the same spin all the time. If it is, for example, up in the ground state, then it is up in the excited state and up when back in the ground state again. No change. In phosphorescence, there is a twist. The electron changes its spin in the excited state. 
This moves the electron into an odd energy level called a trap, because the electron can stay here for quite a long time before changing back to its original spin, falling back to ground state and thereby releasing light. This light is what we see as afterglow, since it can be released hours after we charge the phosphor. Alright, as you probably can tell, I have caught a cold, maybe even the man flu. So before I end up like this guy, I will finish the video with some more phosphorescent samples. Click like if you did like, and subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me. Thanks for watching, see you soon.